Hello, I'm Mimi. I'm a digital illustrator running my own small art business and I wanted to show you how I make cute branded documents for my business that are clean and modern but still show off my creative personality. It's really useful to be able to make documents for your business because at some point you're going to want to create a pitch, maybe a portfolio, or sell a digital document product. I usually make my documents in Adobe InDesign because I already have the software, but today I'm going to show you how to make a document in Canva using the exact same workflow because Canva is free and easy to use. This video isn't sponsored by Canva, I just think it's a really great tool for small businesses. Everything we do today is going to be using the free version of Canva, but you can also upgrade to Canva Pro if you like, which gives you access to more graphics and templates and lets you add a brand kit. So if you watched my last video, you will have seen that I made a document for my Patreon to explain how my new illustration club works. So for this tutorial, I'll recreate that exact document with the same process I used in InDesign, but in Canva instead. Before we jump into the actual document creation, I wanted to really quickly share some basics about document design. When you're making a document, think about if it needs a cover page. For me, if I'm making something that's going to be more than about five pages long, and especially if I'm going to be selling it as a product, I'll usually put a cover page on it. If it's a more casual document that's only short, like this explainer document is, then I won't put a cover on it, but the first page will probably have a bigger heading instead. Think about the hierarchy of your information, which means what's the most important information you want the reader to see first. You can influence this by changing the size or color of something like a heading to show it's important, or find some way to make it stand out. If everything in your document is the same size and has the same visual importance, nothing will stand out and it will be more difficult to read. It's also worth thinking about whether you need a copyright or confidentiality disclaimer on your document to protect yourself, especially if it's a product that you're selling or a confidential portfolio. Think about how you can mix up the layout of your pages to be more interesting, especially if you have lots of text. If you're stuck for ideas, then Canva has some templates you could try, or I've made a Pinterest board with some inspiration specifically for this that I'll leave the link to in the description. And perhaps most importantly for us creatives, I think it's key to show your personality in your documents. Create illustrated assets and make your own borders that make it clear the document belongs to your art style and creative brand. Even if you're making something professional, you can still make it arty and fun. So let's make this document. I'll log into Canva on my computer and first I want to make a new A4 document. Canva will recommend some sizes for you here on the home page, or you can click up at the top right to create a new design. You can make a custom size if you want, but it already has a list of common sizes, so I'll just select the A4 document size, which is the size I make most of my documents in. So now we have a nice fresh page. You'll see straight away on the left that Canva has some template options that you can choose from to get started with if you like. Keep in mind some of them only come with a pro account, and I think it's more fun to make your own backgrounds and borders anyway if you're a creative and you want to show off your style. I can name my document up the top, and Canva will auto-save the document when changes are made, and if you're ever not sure, you can see up the top left here it'll tell you that it's all saved. You can also undo up here, but the thing I really, really like about Canva is that most of the normal keyboard shortcuts that you'd use in any other creative program like the Adobe Suite will also work here, so you can Ctrl or Command Z just like you would elsewhere. Down the side here, you can browse for individual elements that you want to add if you just need a shape or something. I would recommend familiarizing yourself with Canva's licensing terms for commercial use because it's just always a good thing to be on top of as a small business owner. And these frames down the bottom are really handy because you can just drag and drop an image into them and they come in lots of shapes. And you can also upload your own designs and add text from these other tabs. So for us to make our own arty document, we're going to upload our own assets and assemble them all with text in Canva. I've already made the backgrounds and assets I need for this document, but often I make them as I go depending on what I need. 
I've drawn mine in Photoshop because that's what's on my computer, but you could also do the same process in any drawing program like Procreate. This is the background I've made for my first page, so the heading is really big and is almost like a mini cover, and I've made sure that I have loads of room in the middle to lay out my text. I've got in here all of the border elements that I know won't need to be moved when I lay out my document, but by making the background in Photoshop, I can illustrate just like I normally would and have full creative control of what my border or background looks like. So I have this file saved as a JPEG and I can just drag and drop it into Canva's upload panel. Once that's uploaded, I can drag it over my page and if I hold it over the edge of the page, you'll see it snaps to the full background. Or if I hold it over the middle of the page, it'll drop it there. So make sure it's previewing as the whole background and drop it there. Now this is just a one page document at the moment, but we can add new pages by clicking on the add page icon in the top right of our document canvas. If I were just making a one or two page document, I'd probably make it all in Photoshop. The benefit of using Canva or InDesign is that it makes it much easier to lay out text and assets across multiple pages. So let's start adding our text and I've already got my text written out. I always write my text for documents or blogs somewhere else first and then copy it over because that way I always have a copy of it somewhere if something goes wrong with Canva or my website and I won't lose the work. So I'll drag and select the first section of text and copy it and then head back over to Canva to make a text box for it. Click on the text tab down the side here and Canva will have some text box options for you. Let's just select the subheading option for now to get some medium sized text and it'll make us a nice new text box in the middle of the page. I can change the font up the top left of this toolbar and there are loads of options to choose from. The ones with the little crown are only available for pro accounts and also if you have specific fonts for your brand, you can upload them with a pro account as well. Just click on the font you want to try and as long as you have your text box selected, it'll change the font of your text. I'm going to try Roboto for my body and subheading text because it's a pretty solid, ordinary font. We can change the font size with the plus and minus arrows up the top, or you can just resize the box. And I'm going to change the width of my text box to fit the edge of the margins. Hovering over the edge of the text box will give us the left right resizing arrow and if we drag it toward the edge of the page while holding down alt to expand the other side as well, it will actually snap to the margins for us. You don't want your document text to run literally to the edge of the page, there's always a safe margin that stops about an inch in from the side so that the text looks neat and doesn't get cut off in printing. Now when I paste in my text, it will go to the edges of my text box. Canva has quite good alignment tools when you're dragging assets around the page. It'll show you in purple what it's aligning to, like the page margins or being center aligned. I want this text to be at the top of my page underneath the Illustration Club logo. I've got all the usual text editing tools up the top here if I want to make changes. And I do want to change the line spacing of this font because it feels a tad too spaced out. Let's zoom in a bit using the slider down the bottom so I can see what I'm doing with this text a bit better. Okay, I'm happy with that for now. I'm going to get my next piece of text which will be a heading for how the illustration club works. Then I'll make a new text box over in Canva and paste my text into it. I can resize and drag using the handles around the text box. And now I want to find a font that's a bit playful. I usually use a font called Chinchilla that isn't on Canva, but I don't mind finding another one today. You can search the fonts for keywords if you like, or you can just click into the search box and it'll give you some categories to search through as well. So I'm going to have a look through the bold fonts for something that's a bit fun but still legible. Now I want another paragraph of body text, so I'm just going to copy the first section of text we made. I can do that by holding down Alt and then clicking and dragging the text box which will duplicate it just like it would in other creative programs, or I can Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste. I'll get my next section of text and paste it in, 
and I want these new paragraphs to be less important than the subheading at the top. So I either need these paragraphs to be smaller or thinner, or the lines of text at the top need to be bigger and bolder. Like I said earlier, if all your text is the same size and weighting, then you won't have enough hierarchy and it will be more difficult to read your document. So to help explain my illustration club in this document, I drew a little illustration that I'll drag into my uploads tab and then drag onto my document. Remember that if you hover an image over the edge of the document, it'll try and make it the background, but we don't want that this time, so I'll just drag it to where I want it to sit. You can also click on an image in the sidebar and Canva will plonk it right in the middle of the page. I want to make sure things feel fairly balanced in my document, so it's pretty common for me to shuffle things up and down until the spacing feels good. To break up this text a little and to highlight the How It Works title, I'm going to put a bit of colour behind it, and I've actually got a bunch of brushstroke assets that I've made for this exact situation. I just drew a few simple rectangle or oval shapes with a digital brush and then saved them as PNGs in different colours and now I have a whole collection of brushstroke assets to pull from when I need them. I've popped this pink one behind the title and stretched it out so that it covers the whole text and to me it just gives a bit more hierarchy and personality to the page and it unifies the colours from the top and bottom of the page background as well. We can really easily shuffle any of these assets around by clicking and dragging, by selecting and then using the arrow keys on your keyboard, and you can also select multiple objects by drawing a box around them. Now I'm not convinced I really like this font, I think it's a bit too chunky for me maybe, so I can change the font at any time by browsing through the fonts available and choosing a new one. I like to only use two or three fonts for my documents, any more than that can start to feel cluttered. I'll use a fun, bold font for titles, and then I choose a really simple, modern font for the body text. I prefer sans serif, which means without the serifs, which are the little flourishes you get on the ends of letters of more traditional fonts. Even if you just have two fonts, you can still change the size and weighting of them to influence hierarchy, so you still have lots of options. You don't need new fonts for every time you want to make something stand out. So I'm pretty happy with the progress of my first page, and now I'll get started on the second, which will be a little bit different. I don't need the big header that I had on the first page because I don't want it to be the centre of attention. I want a background that draws less attention and has more space for text, so I've made a second background option that uses the same elements but is laid out a bit differently. I've dropped that in as my background for the second page, and rather than making new text boxes, I'm just going to copy the ones I already have. So I'll select the heading text box from the first page, Control C to copy, and then go to my second page and Control V to paste. I'll then copy and paste my new heading into the text box and it will maintain the formatting settings for me. I actually think this font is a bit too hard to read when there's more text, so let's find a different font that's a bit simpler. I'm just browsing through the handwritten fonts because they often have a bit of personality to them. Just like I did with the heading text box, I'll copy and paste my paragraph text box so that I have the same formatting as the first page, and then copy and paste my next section of text into it. These sections of text are explaining three activities, so I want the formatting of each section to be the same because they all go together. So I've selected both text boxes by shift clicking to select multiple, and then holding down alt to click and drag them which will duplicate them. Now I have a couple of illustrations to go with these sections, and rather than just having everything center aligned, I'm going to align the text to alternating sides and pop the drawings in next to them. It's just going to make the layout more interesting and present the information in more manageable chunks. I'll drag in the illustration that I already made and saved out as a PNG. The main difference here with using a PNG instead of a JPEG is that PNGs can have a transparent background, which just gives me more flexibility with where I can put them. This text can probably be a little bit smaller. I usually size paragraph text between 10 and 12 points, but it does depend on the font. 
You want your text to be legible, but not overwhelming. Now I'll pop in the illustration that I have for the next section and resize it to be similar to the other one. I do like this layout, but I feel like it feels a little bit flat. So to fix that, I'll use some more brushstroke assets to highlight my headings and bring some color into the middle of my page. If you duplicate an asset and find that it's covering something it shouldn't be, you can change the order by selecting it and clicking on position in the toolbar and either sending it backwards one layer at a time or all the way to the back if you want it behind everything. And if I'm using the same shape more than once on the same page, then I'll usually just rotate or flip it so that it's not so obvious to the eye that it's the exact same. So I'm happy with this page and I want another one just like it. So instead of just adding a new blank page, I'll click on the duplicate page icon instead to get a copy of it. So now I have two of the same page and I can just adjust the second one for my next section of text. I'll just copy and paste in my new text and make adjustments so everything is aligned. And I'll speed this up because you've already seen this process already. Now I have a sort of closing paragraph that I want to be a bit stronger than the normal text. So I'll use the same formatting as the bold text that I started the document with. The only other section I have is a quick explainer of Discord, which I definitely want to feel separate from the other text somehow. After I've duplicated the text boxes that I want and pasted in my text for that section, I'm going to shuffle the order of my page because I think the bold paragraph makes more sense at the end. So now I want to make this Discord section feel different and one way I can do that is by giving a different background to that section. Canva has some elements I could use, but I already have my own that I've drawn. So I'm going to upload this oval shape that I have as a PNG and drag it in. I want it to comfortably cover the whole background of this Discord section and the text that's with it. And for this document, I want it to go off the edge of the page. I'll use a white shape to highlight the heading so that it stands out on the pink. And I actually already have a Discord icon asset that I used for something else that I can drag in to make it more visual. The last thing I need to add to this document is a hyperlink that I have here to help readers with setting up their Discord. So I can add that by copying the link, selecting the text in my document that I want to hyperlink, clicking on the link icon in the top right of the toolbar, and then pasting my link into the text box. You'll see the text is now underlined as a hyperlink. Keep in mind though, that when you export, you'll need to save as a PDF for the hyperlink to work because not all files support hyperlinks. So that's my document all finished now. I can just go through with fresh eyes and make any tweaks that I think it needs. And then I'm ready to download from Canva. To download the document, click on the download icon in the very top right of the page and it'll give you file options with a brief explanation of each file. For this document, I want to export as a standard PDF so that I can download multiple pages together in one file with an active hyperlink. Once it's downloaded, I have a nice PDF document that's ready to share with the world. Make sure you check at this stage though for typos or errors to fix because I usually have a few and also check any hyperlinks you've added to make sure they go to the right place. So that's how you can make custom branded documents for your small business in Canva. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you did and thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.